May 19th, 2013 started out just like any other day, you know. Um, me and Gio would always have breakfast together and he would come down and play his puzzles and everything. And, and so it just started out like any other day. And we were really um, focusing on trying to get Gio onto finishing potty training. And so he was doing that. And so we were out celebrating. It was also Quentin's um, five month day. I guess he just turned five months on that day. And so we thought that we wanted to go out and celebrate and originally we were wanting to go out for a barbecue and that didn't really work out and so we thought let's just go out for a nice dinner then. And so we went to Rick's Grill um, and we chose, uh, it was a beautiful evening and so we chose a table on the patio sitting in the sun and um, we sat there. Quentin fell asleep in his car seat on the way and so we just left him strapped into his car seat like he would be in, in the car. We just were, we were laughing. It was, everything was such a, it was such a happy time in our lives. You know, like we really felt like we had everything. And just moments before this happened, we had our glasses of water and we picked them up and we cheers to life. And then moments later, Richard Suda's vehicle came driving through the patio and ran through the entire table and pinned Gio to the wall. And it was just absolute madness from then on. From that moment on, my life has been absolute madness. And um, yeah, it was the first moments of realizing that, you know, was everybody okay? Realizing that George was okay, realizing that, that Quentin was, you know, alive and then ultimately realizing that Gio wasn't. And um, life was, you know, like life was hard for me. And Gio was like my light, you know, Gio was, you know, as a parent, you understand this now, that Gio brought so much light to my life and so much music and so much joy. And in a moment that was all gone. And being in the hospital there, and holding on to him, holding on to the shell of what was left and not wanting to go home. Because like, what do you even do there now? You know, and what is my life going to be like now? And I remember going home and it being so quiet. I didn't know where to direct my life from there. I knew that I couldn't just let this happen. I knew that I couldn't just let this be swept under the rug. And so immediately, like I couldn't sleep. That night after coming back from the hospital, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do anything. I just sat there in the silence and I started writing on Facebook. I started writing what happened and I just, I wanted to write so that I could tell everybody and not have to tell the same story over and over. And I shared it with everybody and I told people what was happening and I asked for people to meet me at the courthouse because Gio was killed on Sunday. Monday was a holiday and Tuesday we were in court for Richard Suter's bail hearing. I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe that the speed of everything, my world stopped, but everything kept going on so fast. And so I asked for my community, I reached out to my community and asked for people to join me and to stand by me. And I was absolutely floored by the response. I remember the first time walking into the courtroom and seeing the halls full of people, everybody, you know, seeing how much they'd been touched by Chio and the loss. That it really gave me that strength to fight and to, um, to carry Gio's story on and, and to build a legacy for him. And so that's what we really tried to do with the justice for Gio. Yep. And trying to not let it happen in vain, trying to not let it happen so that it can just be swept under and forgotten about and have somebody just receive a slap on the wrist and that's it. And so our community really came and wrapped their arms around us. And one of the first organizations to really do that on July 6, 2013, was Monster Pro Wrestling. And 
they had, um, they invited our whole family there and they had a little belt with Gio's name on it. And they brought us into the ring and they gave us this little belt and the entire crowd was chanting, Gio, Gio, like, it was just such a moment. And, uh, and yeah, they gave us this little belt and I've kept it this whole time. And then we fast forward nine years of absolute hell, you know, five years being dragged through the justice system, dragged all the way to Supreme Court, ultimately just to be told that yes, they would uphold Richard Souter's sentence, but that it would cause him undue hardship to go and serve his sentence. No regard for the undue hardship that I've been living and no regard for the life sentence that I've been serving. It would cause him undue hardship to be accountable for the things that he's done. And so I had to learn to just take that on the chin and realize that the answers I was looking for were never going to be found in the legal system. And so for me, I focused on I focused on my little boy who survived and trying to be the mother that he deserves and trying to build a life that we can be proud of. And so throughout my healing journey, um, me and Massive, me and Sean kept in touch. And a year, year and a half ago, he reached out to me and asked if I wanted to be involved in Monster Pro Wrestling. Um, if I wanted, I think he wanted me to ref or announce or something like that. But as soon as he said it, it was just something clicked. And like I said, it was like, everything in my life has brought me to this moment. And so he asked me if I wanted to be involved and I was like, yes, I wanna be a wrestler. I just wanted to like hang out and have some fun and have people that care about me and, and have, you know, like a, a an outlet, I guess. Yep. And then it's turned into this, I don't know, it's kind of just become larger than life. And we got to go on this, on this tour. So Massive got to, um, Massive's been doing this, this tour with Tony Candelo. I think this last year was his 11th year doing the tour. And so he was training me and getting me ready for that tour. And then ultimately brought me along on the tour with him and introduced me to Tony Candelo and introduced me to everybody. And, um, and going into those communities and performing in front of indigenous youth, that was like my moccasin square garden, you know? And that's when I realized that I could connect with these kids and, and that I could connect with them on a, in a different way. Yeah. And going into these communities on this tour um, every time when you go into these communities, they're isolated bush communities. Um, and so when someone dies, the whole community shuts down. And that happened like record amounts on this tour. Tony Candela, like I said, has been running this tour for 30 years. He said that that's the most deaths he's had on a single tour because it's just like the suicide and the premature deaths. They, they're like a domino effect. You know, and so being able to go into those communities and speak to some of the youth about hope and about resiliency, that has been, you know, it's given me a new fire. And it's, I want to be somebody that I can be proud of, that my son can be proud of, but that these Indigenous youth can be proud of. Ultimately, I just want to be able to travel and be able to connect with more people. I'm realizing now that you know, my story is, is, has been able to kind of help me connect with people and, and share some hope with people. And so I, I'm hoping just for more opportunities to be able to do that. And you never know who, who whose life you can, can impact or how you can be impacted. So I think even just like one person, you know, hearing that and saying like, she can do that, I can do that, like that would be awesome, yeah. right? Just being able to inspire people to keep going 
just in the ring, it's never just me. There's always three people at least, you know? Outside of the ring, I can't even count how many people have supported me and guided me and lifted me along the way to be here today because I would be a sopping mess in the corner on the floor without them. You know, people like yourself, people like you've seen the thousands of people that have come yeah. to support and love and, and I absolutely would not be here without all of that, you know, and so it's it's not just my triumph story, it's, you know, it's an entire village, you know, it's an entire community that's that's gotten to this point. Sage has um, just more charisma than most people that you see. She's got an it factor. So if she can learn to wrestle and harness that and tell that story, she has the ability, and we saw it on this Northern tour, the communities embraced her. Like it was really insane to watch every kid surround her. And there's a documentary coming out where you, everybody will get to see this, but it's, she made an impact on these kids' lives and that she will continue to do that. The world needs her. The indigenous people need her. But I always tell everybody that, you know, your character is really an extension of who you are. And Sage as the matriarch really has wrapped her arms, I like to say this, around Monster Pro Wrestling. She really unites the guys. We really team build her here. And she's probably the best at that of anybody, including me. I still learn things from her. I learn patience from her. I learn, you know, instead of bringing up all the bad things, hey, you know what, you did this really good, but we got to work on this, you know? So she's taught me stuff. So that's, and that's really what I'm trying to get out of everybody. We're all going to learn from each other. But, you know, from her, I think she's got this ability to be this incredible role model, not just for indigenous girls, for every little girl out there. Yeah. Who cares about what color her skin is? This is a, bigger than that. This is about, you know, what she went through and what she's overcome and the person she has become because of it. So how powerful is it for me when her mother comes up to me and puts her hand on mine and says, you are helping my daughter heal. That's powerful for me because I don't think I have that power. I see somebody as a wrestler, and yeah, I know she's had a hard time, and yeah, do I think this can take her mind off it for a couple of hours? Sure, we've all kind of, that's a funny thing about, we're such a motley crew, we've got an addictions counselor, you know, we've got the matriarch, we've got the little guy, you know, we've got just such a crazy cast of characters, and that's, we're all, we have one thing in common, we all love wrestling. So everybody shows up and what I try to do is team build. So we all do ring crew, we all sell tickets, we all do it together. That way we share the success. And that's what I've seen everybody do, but she's one of the greatest leaders. Like I said, the matriarch likes to wrap her arms around everything. So the company, kids, anybody, that's just who she is as a person. So how I've watched her change is, She's this incredibly confident woman that understands that she has a role now in, in society. She is a role model for girls. So I've seen her Facebook posts change, the clothing she wears, the language, she understands that. So for me as a coach, how proud could a guy be? Because it's powerful, like listening to her mom say, like all these kids surrounding and they're, we love you, we love you. And you can see she's tearing up. And she's talking to her mom and her mom says, that's G. That's his energy. All these kids love you and she's telling them, be proud of who you are.